of our studio, the man, the legend. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm all right. Thanks, James Mark. Creedon here with Media Watch, starting with Theresa May's entrance at the yes. Conservative Party conference to ABBA's Dancing Queen. Uh, but you'd have done it better, Mark. I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have done it with less awkwardness. If you could do it as awkwardly as she did, because this was an attempt by Theresa May to show that she's not this... Right. In inverted commas, you know, sort of Maybot robot, sort of awkward character. It's hardly fitting of someone who's the Prime Minister of the UK to I walk know. in doing this she was playing up, I ridiculous think, to... kind of dance she was trying to do. Well, shall we have a look at it? This is that's, just That's probably better than me this... trying to describe it. I mean, it? people will understand. Sure. Uh, oh, this to was, you, James. This, this was from um, a tweet. So you see Dancing Queen coming in, kind of... Maybot is a pretty good word for it. But she was walking in to Dancing Queen. This right. wasn't put on by no, no, on Twitter. No, no, no editing. the Tory party conference this, in Birmingham. This really happened. Yeah. And <laughs> my old colleagues at ITV News capturing it. And then she continued to sort of be a little bit awkward. It was kind of funny, in, as the French would say, deuxième degré, troisième degré, kind of a few degrees. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I found it embarrassing for the Conservative Party, well, frankly. That, you know. The video was attached to that comment. Did I seriously just watch that? That's just one kind of random Twitter comment. But then, Mark, what people were doing... So that was a reference to her dancing when she was in South Africa and Kenya in a yeah. weird and awkward way, and she's being ironic about it, but it did it work? Yeah. I'm not sure. I anyway, think sometimes you've got to, sometimes you've just got to play it straight. And I think right. you know if you if you're the prime minister of the UK yeah. oh, yeah. in crisis, right. you know it's, it's it's so people had alternative titles. Uh, this guy was wondering could they have played SOS? That's another that's another <laughs> ABBA, another ABBA song. <laughs> I mean, probably better to avoid that one. And then others were saying maybe money, money, money. I suppose the Conservative Party more associated with that's that's, that's too easy. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then a whole alternative set of oh, this lyrics. is good. This is good. Go for it. Go. On. EU can dance. You I'm not going to sing dance. it. Hound can dive. Hound can dive. Taking a chance with your lives, etc. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. good. But I suppose just for for a tiny bit of analysis, because we are zeroing in on here, I suppose, the the, the buzz moment. uh, The reason she's doing that is probably for, you know, to try to respond or play the same game or it's it's kind of lowest common denominator stuff, isn't it? It's kind of race to the bottom in terms of trolling each other. And the problem she's got is, of course, the party split. Um, Most people like Johnson and his cohorts are against the checkers agreement, which she's using as the basis of her negotiation with Barnier in the EU. Right. The, mo- the momentum is, is not That's with her. And, and he has been using these sort of trolling tactics. Mm-hmm. That goes back to a few days ago when it's a reference to her saying the naughtiest thing she ever did was running through a field of wheat. And so he ran through a field of wheat to sort of troll her. So and we know well that Boris has done far naughtier things than that. <laughs> Indeed. It's all been reported on Indeed. these extramarital things, etc. Et right. Et but then look what looks, look what's happened. All been reported on. Look what happens to the political debate. You then have tweets with people saying, uh, it's not a field of wheat. There's hogweed <laughs> and there's grass seed heads. So anyway, the political debate gone so, out the window so there. Boris running through a field of weeds. It gets <laughs> even more fitting, doesn't it? You, know? you see, that might actually have some useful symbolism. Yeah. Anyway, um, He's move, a strange character. I'll move on to one topic uh, on uh, the, the, via social media and the media that I think is a, a bit more um, uh, serious today before getting back to stuff that's maybe less serious. Um, a prominent Saudi commentator, journalist by the name of Jamal Khashoggi. He was in uh, Istanbul. He was in the Saudi consulate there and he disappeared. Now, it has since transpired, according to the Turkish authorities, that he is still there. But for 24 hours, there was no word of him. People were thinking, what happened? He went into a consulate, never came out. Uh, Has he been taken out of the country? And there was a whole lot of speculation. And journalists, including many from the Washington Post, which he has been a contributor to, took to social media to draw attention to the fact that this Saudi a journalist had uh, essentially gone missing. There was even a hashtag, the most used hashtag at one point in the last 24 hours on the Arabic language Twitter sphere saying the kidnapping of uh, Jamal Hashugji. Now, kidnapping might be too strong a word, right? But it was drawing attention to the incident that was still unclear in terms of the facts. And others were saying, well, why, why, could, why would he ever have been arrested without saying the word arrested and sharing articles that were very critical of the Crown Prince as uh, perhaps... Uh, a reason why the Saudi authorities, uh, even is, in consulates is, this abroad, is Mohammed bin Salman, the reforming Crown yes. Prince, the man who's trying to modernise in inverted commas Saudi Arabia, but in his image, right. modernising the way he wants to modernise. Right, and certainly there's been a crackdown on people who are not in line with his yeah. way of doing things and mm-hmm. thinking. So it's it's good to see that there's a lot of attention being drawn to the incident. Reporters Without Borders have also asked for clarification. And uh, in uh, the US, you have the Committee to Protect Journalists as well. So uh, there's been a lot of... of uh, attention brought to this, which might indeed affect the outcome yeah, more positively. One Khashoggi, an old Saudi name and another Khashoggi in the news. Finally, a presidential alert 
has been received by every U.S. citizen. That's right. With a mobile phone. So everyone in the U.S. who's got a mobile phone has got this presidential alert. What's all this about, See, it's, it, Well, it's FEMA, so that for fed, federal emergencies, yeah. and it was to yeah. test it. So on the surface of it, that might seem legitimate. But the, the, thing that, the thing is, it's called a presidential alert, and it's coming, I suppose, with that uh, title. So people uh, on social media and elsewhere were saying, well, actually, do we want to get a presidential alert uh, from this particular president, given that he is so divisive? Mm. Uh, some asking, could they turn it off? Could they request for it to be switched off or even to sue for getting this message? Some saying they'd turn their phone off. You can't refuse it, by the way. This is a message that is sort of imposed and for uh, reasons of, of security, I suppose. Uh, but many uh, riffing off it on social media, imagining what it could look like and being inspired perhaps by uh, the tone and tenor of his tweets. Because people were saying, if it's presidential or it's anything like a tweet, I don't want it. But it's not. And there was this clarification on by one Twitter user saying, look, please read about it. It's not the president who's sending it. It's FEMA. It's designed to help get the word out about natural disasters. But I suppose some feeling that having that ping on your, your phone pinging uh, without having a choice uh, to deactivate it is, is sort of an in invasion of privacy or whatnot. So it's somewhat controversial move, but many saying it's for the right reasons. James but Creedon, thank you as ever very much indeed. James Creedon with Media Watch. You come with the business. Thank you. And uh, thanks to you for watching.